All right, all. I like was suggesting in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install the Ergo Shadow Max CPU cooler on the AM4 socket. We're also gonna be doing some temperature testing here today to show you if it's gonna be an upgrade compared to that stock heat sink or not. Everything I discussed today in today's video will be linked in the description below. And there may be some other links down there that may interest you as well. But let me flip you over here and we'll go down through the porch to make up the test bed for the day. All right, guys. And to start out the porch for this that's in the test bench today, we have the Ryzen 7 2700, which is 8 core, 16 thread processor. That's why I'm using this processor. It is a Zen Plus architecture. It is 8 core, 16 threads. So it will run a little bit warmer than what the Ryzen 3000 series processor runs at. So I thought it'd be a good one to test on this. For the motherboard, we have the ASRock B450M Pro 4. For storage, we have the Silicon Power 512 gig NVMe M.2 SSD. For the RAM, we have G-Skills Ripdraws 5 Series 16 gigs. We do have the EVGA 650 watt 80 plus gold modular power supply. We have the Gigabyte Radio and RX 5600 XT Windforce OC for the graphics cord. In the case, it is the Cooler Master Half X Evo. And when I did my testing, the side panels was on this with two 120s as intake fans and one 120 as an exhaust fan, which I believe would be a pretty good configuration for what most people are running nowadays. And of course, we are we will be using the Ergo Shadow Max CPU L Cooler. Now, since we ran down through the portion to make up the system, let me flip you over here and I'll show you how to install this thing onto the AM4 platform. All right, guys, and to start out this uh, procedure on installing this, we're going to start out by prepping the back plate that comes with it. And we're going to be also needing to prep the cooler itself. So we pulled out, and since we are using the AMD4, AM4 platform, we are using the brackets here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it says AM4. It's the brackets that hook up to the bottom of the cooler. And we're gonna pull out the four little screws that we need to attach this to the bottom of the air cooler. I'll flip it up here. And all right, guys, the way to prep your cooler, these little AM4 brackets that come in their own individual bag here. I just pulled them out of the bag. You need the screws facing up towards you. Magnetic tip number two screwdriver is highly recommended for this. And you take it and screw them down. Get that one started. And like everything that I do, I get the other one started. There we go. Make sure that little piece of plastic's up away from them. You don't want that underneath of them. Now, since they've gone both distorted, tighten them down, snug them down just a little bit here. Okay, then we're gonna go back and give them another little tighten just to make sure they're good and snug. You don't need, you know, you don't need a whole lot of force. Just, just medium snugness on them. Then we're going to turn it around here and we're going to do the other side the same way. And those are your bottom plates. Now your air cooler will be, uh, is prepped to be installed. The back plate looks a little funny, but it's pretty typical of what you see in most air coolers or all in one coolers for back plates. If you can't use the, uh, the original one that comes on, which uh, you do have to use your back plate. If you can see that, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but they are listed right here's the, there's the black plastic pieces that's sticking out that you need for your AM4. If you look real close right there by the holes, it tells you AM3 and AM4. That's going to tell you which one these little posts got to go into. Okay, you slide the post up into it. And there's a little notch in here that these slide down into that makes it kind of nice. And these little black plastic pieces, the black ones is for AMD and there's also yellow ones, but then for Intel. So you want to make sure you use the black ones for this. And with them little posts in a spot, just slide these right over the edges. Make sure the groove is where the standoff comes up out. Just slide them down on. And when it's done, you should have something that looks like this. 
with the four little silver posts sticking up out of it with the black caps holding them in place for you. That was the preparation of the air cooler and the back plate. So uh, now we will be pulling the motherboard over here and we will be getting your motherboard prepped. All right guys, and if you're replacing the stock heat sink, that's what this is, is stock heat sink on it. Or if you're not replacing the stock heat sink and it's a brand new build and you're putting this air cooler on it, you just have to take off the four screws that hold down them two little brackets and slide them off. But we do have the stock heat sink here, so we'll have to unplug it here. Okay, then you take the four screws out, just like if we installed it. There we go, we'll get them all loosened up. Let's take them the rest of the way out. That one's all the way out. All right, looks like a couple of them already all the way out. They'll be all right. This one here still got us. Okay, give it a little twist, that way it loosens up the thermal paste. And we will have to clean this. All right, now we got to clean the thermal paste off of this, at least off the CPU. I'd recommend cleaning it off the air, uh, heat sink as well. But you need to at least get that definitely off of the CPU. So what am I going to use? I'm going to use a coffee filter. Why do I use coffee filter? They are cheap and they don't leave the lint like a paper towel does. And they're a little bit rougher than a paper towel, so they do a really good job and they don't leave no lint behind. For the cleaning solution we got today, we have 91% rubbing alcohol. You don't have to have 91%, but of course, the higher the percentage of alcohol is in the bottle, the better it is to do this with. But you can pick this up at your local uh, drug store or your big market store, whichever. And we're just going to take our paper towel here and dip some, uh, get some rubbing alcohol on it here. Okay. And then just take it and rub the old thermal paste off of it. All right, guys, now since I got that cleaned up pretty good, there is still a little bit there over the writing or the CPU sock, but that'll be all right. Uh, I did go ahead and clean up the heat sink some. I'll clean that up a little bit later on when I have more time to do so, because I'm sure I'll use it in another project. And your motherboard at this point is just sitting on the back plate. So you just flip the motherboard over, or you just lift the motherboard up and it'll come off. Now the new, the new air cooler will actually screw down into these, but I don't know if I can get you a good picture of this or not. But if you look down in here at the studs, you match them up like this, the studs for the back plate they provide ain't quite as long as what the ones is on the stock back plate. So you will definitely want to use the back plate that comes with the cooler. That way you don't over sense or over tight the air cooler down in your CPU. And just like we took the other one off, raise up your motherboard here to the back. Take line up then post, slap it on the back here, just like so. You lay it back down, you lay it right back down. There, there is some play, them, them screw holes, the studs that they provide ain't quite as thick or as big in diameter as the stock ones. And if you're wondering, once you have it installed, that's the way it looks like on the back. All right, guys, and look at the back of the heat sink here. You can tell it's got the plastic on it. There is no, uh, there is no thermal paste on the heat sink itself, so we'll have to put it on, which they do provide a little bit here. Um, I usually use MX4 for most of my CPU cooling applications for thermal paste. But since we got this, we're gonna go ahead and use this. We're gonna rip it open here. I'm gonna squeeze it out. Just like so. And what they give you is probably about enough. Actually looks to be a little too much. And yes, there's different schools of thought on this. But if you've seen any of my other videos, I like to spread mine out. That way, if there is too much, I can always scrape it off. So I'm gonna do that as well on this one. There we go, I think that'll be all right. And like I showed you, it does have this piece of plastic. You definitely wanna make sure you remove this plastic at this time. And while that plastic's on there, they put that plastic on there, that way you don't get no fingerprints or nothing on your bottom of your cooler before you're ready to install it. So you have to make sure you remove that plastic. If not, you will definitely have overheating issues. 
and you want to make sure your air goes setting up right because it is uh, A or G B. Just line it, set it down on there, line it up with the with the studs. It should line up fairly easy for you. So I'm having a little bit of issue getting lined up. And you start with one corner, just a couple twists just to get it started. Then you do the opposite. And then you do another one. Then you do another one. Right, that one ain't wanting to line up. There we go. Get, get started down in there. All right. Now since they're all started, there's a couple turns on each one, alternating back and forth, because you don't want all the pressure on one side of your CPU to start out with. So you just want to give them a few turns each. And they are spring-loaded, so they should bottom out and stop where they need to be. That's another reason why you should use the back plate that comes with it. Like I showed you, these standoffs ain't quite as tall as the ones that come with the original AM4 back plate. So it may interfere, if you try to use that original back plate, it may interfere with, uh, with the pressure on the CPU to keep your CPU cool. Okay, there we go. Get them a nice little snug here. And again, you don't need these real tight. You just need to snug them down pretty good. And yes, there's a piece of plastic on top of it there. We're gonna leave that on for right now so we don't mess that up. They got the cables here for this. If you've seen the unboxing, we do have two cables. This here is to power your fan. So we need to go into your CPU fan header. And this is, or this other little cable right here is for your ARGB. And you take this, line it up here. Then the cable is provided for you. Slide it in there till it clicks, okay? And like I said, this one here, it is the four pin connector. That is your CPU fan. So you find the CPU fan header on your motherboard, which on this particular motherboard is right here. They are usually close to where your CPU is at. Then you take it and slide it down over, just like so. And since I don't have no other ARGB in my system, so I don't have to worry about connecting this to a, to a splitter or anything for ARGB. I'm gonna go ahead and find my ARGB header on the motherboard and I'm gonna connect this to it as well, which on my motherboard it is down here on this bottom end. So once I get the motherboard installed into the case, I'll probably run it underneath and run it back over here to the ARGB header, just to make it look a little bit nicer. That way it ain't strung across the motherboard. Plugs in just like any other ARGB header. Yeah two pins a blank spot and an empty pin just like the connector you just line them up correctly and you push them down on there just like so okay since we got that cable plugged in we have the cpu header plugged in we'll go ahead and peel the plastic off the top of it here there we go we got it started now we'll just take and peel that plastic off make it look all nice and pretty and shiny um, let me get the RAM put back on the motherboard and we'll put this in the case. And uh, I'll give you some grammar shots of what it looks like inside the case before we do the testing. Show you how to put this on the AM4 socket. Now let's look at the temperatures. For today's testing, I ran Cinebench R23. It does put the processor at 100% usage, and it does have a time for a half hour. So I know each run was a half hour. Within a half hour, the temperature will get up to the max. Then they'll start coming down, start equalizing a little bit. So I think that was a fair comparison between the two. And it's being timed by Cinebench R23, so I know both runs were a half hour long. So let's flip over here to see if this thing's actually an upgrade compared to the CPU cooler that comes with the 2700. 
Alright uh, guys, here we are. This is a couple of screenshots at the end of the videos where I tested the CPU coolers. On the left hand side here we have the Ergo Max cooler. And on the right that was the Wraith Spire LED cooler that comes stock with the Ryzen 7 2700. For the Ergo Max, the max temperature got up to 58.5C. The average was 51.7C. On the stock heat sink, the max got up to 57.3C. The average is 55.1C. That max and average is what you really need to look at. The minimum is about what they was uh, idling at the desktop. And then the current just tells you what the current temperature was, which stays both on the cool down after running the test. So them really don't mean a whole lot. But the max temperature was a little bit higher with the Ergo Max at 58.5 compared to 57.3. And the average temperature of 51.7 on the Ergo Max compared to 55.1 on the stock heat sink. Me personally, I don't believe this is much of an upgrade compared to the stock heat sink that comes with the Ryzen 7 2700. If you're going to spend the $35 or $40 that this thing costs, it's pretty well just for the looks. You know, it's a different looking air cooler. It does have ARGB compared to LEDs that come with the stock heat sink with the 2700 which when i show you what it looks like when it when i installed it it was set on green that was by the motherboard since it is hooked into the motherboard you can control the argbs on this cooler with the software once you get it downloaded which i didn't do as far as the leds on the ray spire i think it's a pretty good looking cooler itself especially for being free right out of the box with the ryzen 7 2700 you ain't going to see much of a difference or the way the cpu runs if you do upgrade to this cooler i do believe it's all going to be for for the way the system looks it is a cool looking cooler it does have the argb compared to the leds that the wraith spiral comes with but i don't think it's going to be much of an upgrade as far as cooling goes if you like this kind of content go down and give me a like if not there's that dislike button if you really like this kind of content, maybe hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on. That way you're notified next time I put out a video or go live. There's also a comment section below. I'll go through them every weekend here on my live stream, Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. And also, if you're interested, there's links in the description below for my Instagram and my Twitter. I won't kill your inbox, but I do put up photos of new stuff I have coming in, give you an idea of what's coming up here on the channel. If there's any information about my live stream, if I've got to change the time or the date of my live stream, that's where you get that information as well. But with all that being said, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.